Okay. Recording, yes. is Recording is on. Is on. A few. Right, yes. And now it's instantaneous. There's not like a five second gap. Um, cool. Okay. So this is the Frida, the Fellowship of the Link call for Friday, October 14th, 2022. So close to being a Friday the 13th, but it was not. Mm -hmm. um, and in, 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 in Argentina, it will be the Tuesday. Yeah. The, the unlucky one. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm interested in where everybody's head is. Well, like, what's up for you that has anything to do with our little world here? Right. Yes. What are we up to? Yeah. So I think Chris uh, disappeared. He had to step away for a sec. Oh, okay, here we go. And he's back. back. And he's back. Somebody was knocking at the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to deal with that. As one does. When reality interrupts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I can uh, get started. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Well, I mean, like, uh, when I talk about this, it's always like, well, well a little work. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, uh, uh, so yeah, that's, I guess that's, uh, that's common for me. Yes, I, uh, yeah, so it does uh, a lot of new goals, a lot of um, um, quarterly planning, roadmap for this year. So yeah, it's like a planning season mm. um, and like promo, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, trying for promo, <laughs> let's see. And um, yeah, apart from that, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I dealt with some personal issues, you know, like early in the year, but those are looking fine, you know, like uh, it's like a period of growth, personal growth in that sense. And then the, the, the is Agora and Flans, yeah, for me, you know, like so. Uh, I always the way I, I think about it, um, yes, Flansia is a top level project, and Agora is like uh, in Flansia. The flash is also in the hour, so I like to think of it as recursive. <laughs> yes, and like uh, on that front, uh, I just got back news like uh, the final, you know, they go ahead from the editors of the hour chapter, uh, you know, for the um, for the book. Oh, good. Uh, the one that Matthew is uh, also yeah. writing. Right, and Chris. Yes. Oh, that's right. I don't know about you. Yeah, I was gonna say I may have dropped out. I'm my neither I nor my attorney liked the terms of their book contract. Oh, really? Um, I have some serious concerns about the publisher in terms of what they're doing and how they're doing it. So I oh, okay. So that's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> and I'll, 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 I'll let you make your own decision. But the I have seen better contracts from vanity publishers, and then the scenario I play in. Uh, so if you're you know, if you're an academic and you just need to be published, right? Maybe it's an acceptable thing, but I I saw it and I was like, it, you know, <laughs> and I had two other publishers chasing me for roughly the same material. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I'll take a better payday and use it for that. I you know, I appreciate the perspective they're coming from and where it's going and what it will accomplish. But for me as an individual contributing, you know, a couple hundred hours of work essentially for free, I, and as the only person who makes money off of this that I can tell, unless there is a contract off on the side for the editors, is the publisher. But, you know, the people who are doing mm -hmm. this are not making me. Right. So. But wait, isn't that how capitalism works? <laughs> right. Well, they got the it works, but in this case, they're essentially it's the they're using an academic publishing model where the publisher makes all the money and the people who do the work are not benefiting whatsoever. Man. And in what this case, actually it's most of the people who from what I can tell are like Flancian who have other interests that this might support. And that's lovely. But they're taking 20 authors who all have pre-existing platforms for pushing and promoting and selling the book, which is free publicity for the publisher. And then, you know, you know, unless they offered Flancy on some dramatically different contract than the one I saw, you get a couple free copies of the book and that, that's really it. So you're not going to see yeah. Bentley, you know, you up. We're talking about this at the end of the day. Flancian and uh, Matthew Lowry are contributing to a, a group published book. Uh, and Chris was part of that and then pointed out that the contract did not seem very good for anybody except the publisher. So that's the conversation we're in. Uh, who is the publisher? 
Uh, it's a, a relatively new concern that I can tell. They've only put out about two or three books, one of which is a book by one of the editors. Yes, so, they already knew, yeah. So um, unless, uh, what's I, mean, I presume yes. possibly the editors may have a dramatically different contract where they may see some benefit. Um, but I, it was like, what all this work for, if I were an academic, I would approach it maybe dramatically differently. But even then, it's not like this is a publication that Springer or Elsevier or some major academic platform is putting out and it's going to guarantee at least, you know, 10,000 copies of books for libraries, in which case my opinion would be slightly different. Yeah. But because of the broadcast nature, yeah. Given the size and nature of what this publisher is and what they're doing, I. What's, you know. what's the name of the publisher? Yeah, it sh uh, let me see if it's in the hour uh, because you walk. What's the name of the book? I think I had something in it. So that's, yes, it's in an hour of the book. It's uh, Personal Knowledge Graphs, is the name of the group. Uh, uh, of the book, sorry. And the uh, publishing. Uh, an evil village so song is, the, is kind of the instigator, I think. Yeah. Where? The instigator yeah. person is Evo Velichkov. Oh, yeah. it's yeah. 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 So he's got a, a vested interest in publishing and editing things. So he he may get some intangibles out of it in the from the academy. But the average oh, okay. group of people who and the, the, the literally the boilerplate contract I saw was I saw it and laughed. And I, I even felt bad sending it to my attorney <laughs> who then skimmed through it. I don't think he even read the whole thing. He responded and said, yeah, you should pass. Right. And I was like, I, I don't know these people, so... There's no other attachment to say, like, oh, yeah, that means that for you. How about you pass on my behalf? Because yeah. I'm, like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't even worth, in his opinion, he was like... There's a thing you can go back to and say as a negotiating tactic, I want least, you know, I want favored nation status with every other participant, including the editors. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this isn't even worth doing that for. So mm -hmm. interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe you don't need your you so you don't negotiate against yourself, you say, my contract should be at least the minimum of what everyone else is getting. That way, if an editor or some other big player comes in right. and says, and suddenly they're getting thousands of dollars for their participation, at least you get that as well. And he's like, no, right, right, right. interesting. Yeah, at least in, in my case, um, I just saw it mostly as a reason to um, actually finish something, like put something in like real estate, you know, 20 pages. And I actually, the, the term I was concerned about uh, was the one that was the one that is uh, you know exclusive uh, publishing rights and like uh, and so on. And I was like, well, I actually wanted it to be Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which is what I everything I do is Creative Commons or Apache right now uh, in, in, in public. And uh, and they were actually they seemed pretty really sensible. They were like, okay, what about like one year about exclusive publishing rights just so the book sells whatever it will sell. And then you, uh, you, you, it just goes to create the commons. You just can uh, do whatever you want. I was like, yeah, sounds, sounds fair. Yeah. That, so, that's, yeah. that's not bad. And ostensibly, for your part of the participation, you at least are getting PR and publicity for the ad Right. So, exactly, exactly. For what I was writing and how I was writing and how it fit into the thing, it made no sense for me. Particularly when I've got two other publishers who want to put out a longer full book length thing on the thing I'm working on. Um, well, I, I am personally um, like sad by this just because like the fact that you're in the book was one of the, one of the coolest facts about the book. One of the draws. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm, I mean, I'm happy, you know, like honestly, you know, I was like, if, if Chris is here, yeah. So now, okay, that's something good to know, right? No, no, it's fine. There's all the people as well. But yeah, I guess I'm, I, I'm just saying this in a first thing you're for sharing. Second, I'm totally about your book. So, uh, congratulations on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I, 
I don't know that it's even too much of a loss on their part because I, I was doing a history overview that would have been useful and helpful with the audience who was reading all the other pieces. But if you looked at the table of contents, mine was by far and away the thing that did not fit with all the others. So, oh. you know, I don't, I don't think it's too big a loss for the overall. Okay. I think what we read it on, but uh, okay. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't know if I was there. I just got feedback from the editors, like they read the thing, and I, I have like, I don't know, 80 Google Docs comments, and I haven't even looked into them yet this, this weekend. Because I, they told me not to take action until they had done the whole thing. So, you know, I just didn't look because it's like if I can't take action, it's just going to be stressful. So, yeah, this weekend I will take a look and see whether it can be, whether the patient is still alive, essentially. Yeah. Right? Let me, uh, yeah. let me ask a different question. Um, Chris, if, Chris or anybody, if you were to go create a modern version of a book-like object that was interesting and woven into the web and all those kinds of things, what publishing method tool company would you use? I would publish it myself. I've got yeah. enough experience. In, yeah, yeah. Using, using, you know, using some what? of the models they're using because they're publishing it also, and I'm not sure how they're going to gatekeep the website portion of it, but ostensibly they're going to publish it as a knowledge graph on the web mm -hmm. in concert with the book itself. But I'm not sure how they're going to gatekeep the open web part of it. Because once it's out there on the open web, it's, you know, a free for all. Fair game. I Perhaps they could define it now. <laughs> That's my pitch, but, you know, for perhaps another time. Aram, go ahead. I mean, it's like the Cory Doctorow stuff, right? He does the thing where he does yeah. formal publishing for a lot of this work and is also under Creative Commons on the web. Yeah. Yes. Or, or he'll do what Flancian essentially did, and the publisher will take ex exclusive rights in some area, like the physical print or reprint. One of the, I, one of the clauses in here that was really sad is they not only wanted my thing as a piece of a broader whole for the book, but they also wanted exclusive eternal rights to my chapter to publish. Anywhere, any place they felt like, and I'm like, no, that's that's horrible. Like suddenly I become a famous author. I'm Stephen King, and then you now own the freestanding publishing rights to do with whatever right. you want. Like, you know, they they literally just way over asked for everything. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that's really unusual. In return, yeah. So interesting. interesting. Yeah, perhaps because perhaps they're new. So, you know, like this is like the, uh, I guess, uh, I'm pretty sure charity. Perhaps they're new and they are like coming from a different area. Uh, but, you know, for what it's worth, they seem very open to changing the terms when, when I push back against the you no know, creative commons. Yeah, yeah, well, the terms they offered were so bad, literally. Like, <laughs> you're negotiating against yourself from the start. And right, right, just to start, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see, see, I see your point. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, uh, I want to, yeah, not to hold uh, this uh, too much longer. Uh, PKJ book is the, this. Uh, I mean, if I do go in the direction now, I will, you know, but yeah, I will, I will at least like uh, you know, the idea of editing. So I'm thankful for that, and I'm gonna go over those to try to do it. And the other thing is, from now until November 15 or so, one month is like the anniversary of the hour. Two years. Oh. Two years in November, the first call. Cool. So I'm, I, there's a few things I'm really hopeful I will be able to get done and ship that may actually make it a little more uh, friendly, hopefully, um, and clear. Let's see. Uh, so, so that's that's, that's what I have in my mind. Essentially. Sounds, sounds awesome. Uh, and now I'll uh, pass the uh, the baton. Or yeah, who else would like to check in? And what's up in your world? Um, I guess yes, I, I want to talk about it, but uh, the um, I had the tweet with the kind of editor software I mentioned the other week may be a, a fun thing to talk about that I've seen pop up recently. Which one? Um, it's, uh, it's the French research group. I'm trying to remember Fairmont? the name of it. Um, I don't remember which one you were pointing to. 
Yeah, I, saw it, uh, I didn't know it. Which I haven't funny. heard or seen about it um, until early this week. Um, so this will be... And I had, and actually, I had kind of a fun name. Yeah, Auto Pare. Uh, and this is... Cosmo. Uh, Cosmice. So this is the context. And I'm loading it now. Right. So this is Arthur Perry. This is um, Gotcha. Yeah. And, and, and Cosma basically doesn't touch the original files. It basically lets you visualize what's in a file, right? Yeah. Right. Now, yeah, so it's it very, like, a very different approach. But it was also, I think, the, that sort of approach that we, I think we all wish more tools were taking in the space of give me a data store of some basic text and we'll do something interesting with it. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But that's probably one of the more interesting things I've seen or kind of, and I haven't even fully been able to play around with it yet. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, I've been trying to massage a few quirky things that have popped up with the recent update of Obsidian for me. Have you looked at Cosmic? Um, Rings of the Decade, no? Yeah, this one. <clears throat> yes. Um, I'm in contact with Paul Roney, the developer, and probably going to run a podcast uh, with him. In fact, I should I should run a podcast episode with some of you all. Um, uh, and it seems like there's a bunch of visual note taking um, things. A Cosmic's uh, origin story is is uh, explicitly tied to commonplace books, by the way, Chris. Uh, they all are, whether they know it or not. Yeah, that's that's true. But some of them are uh, like understand that. Uh, here's a post. Uh, here's a post where Paul talks about uh, some of the stuff. But I'm seeing a whole bunch of different platforms and apps and, and things in this space that are hard to distinguish from each other. Another one is Fermat from Batu. Um, and I, I need I need better uh, framing in my head for how these things all fit next to each other. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll go back to the map topic uh, zone that we were talking about last month. That's true. Um, yes, uh, I mean, I really like uh, on bias because you know, like, a product that I take is like starting also from Markdown or more and like, you know, very basic formats and just to do it to take from there. But so, okay, so the way I will, the way I've been exploring this space is like prioritizing tools that are compatible with this idea of like, you know, play, like playing files on a, on a file system on a, or a repository. So those have been like, yeah, and the nice thing about those, of course, is a relatively uh, low risk of adopting them because uh, it doesn't that, uh, and even like the ease of, of trying them out because once you have one database of marginal files or whatever, then you can try like 20 tools, like in the same, same, same day, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that that will be the, the inspiration I'm inter most interested in, like in the taking areas. But as always, has anybody heard of standoff properties or standoff types? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil Codex editor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's great. He's amazing, and he is the standoff properties person. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we have like a friendly back and forth on like you know standoff properties versus uh, markup. Uh, and standoff properties basically says, hey, you should put metadata outside of the data file. Yes. That trying to squeeze them all into the data file just messes things up. Exactly. I mean, essentially, it will be more like a, a out of hand approach to. And of course, it has a lot of advantages. Codex is like a space age for the you know. The, the, the 21st century, not the, uh, <laughs> uh, in my mind, yes. And is, is code how close is Codex to being working code? I've not seen it. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, no, it's it is working. The thing is that it's not open source. Um, and he has taken on like a second engineer uh, earlier this year, I think. Um, I support them, but um, I need to check on that. Yeah. Uh, I guess I've been playfully saying, you know, like, do we will have an open source core. If so, I am so in. I mean, I mean, anyway, because when I see the demos and so on, he's just, I mean, honestly, uh, time zone wise, he's in Australia. This may even work for him. Uh, so, hmm. just to mention, like, he will be, uh, he's, he's great. I really like him. Uh, but yeah, the open source thing, of course, he's from an academic uh, research background, uh, but also in the business, and doesn't handle, um, you know, uh, so he's not fully convinced that the open source way is sustainable. Yeah. What he's doing. Uh, and then another one that's that's making the rounds a lot is Tana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we from uh, skin synthesis. Uh, I mean, uh, not from him. From you know Robert Hasebro. Uh, and more others, no? Yeah, Grim Iverson and a couple others. Yeah. Tarhe I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. I, the one thing that concerns me, and I saw it earlier this week, is they're also not playing the open source, but we're being kind of open enough. And it's the same sort of issue that could be aimed at um, Obsidian as well. Is right. we're, we're open the way Twitter was open in the early days, but we're doing it in a way that we could literally close the gates tomorrow and you're all screwed. Um, if you decide what is open enough today, would you decide differently tomorrow? And this breaks what Clay Shirky used to nicely call the plausible promise. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is, hey, this thing is going to be available open source forever. Whatever you contribute will be, you know, put back in the in the public domain. Okay. Is Obsidian even open source? Did what? Uh, is Obsidian open source? No. No, no it's not. No. I didn't think so. They also, if I'm not mistaken, I think they come from, was it Notion or some other bigger corporate background that is a totally closed source model. So I mean. they, they do this and they've got a plugin architecture that allows them to, you know, hopefully they go make the WordPress route and leave things open as an ecosystem from here on out. But I, it's too easy for these companies to come in and take not only mind share and mind space, yeah. but then, you know, they take all the developers and then scrap oh, yeah. everything. And then as a developer, you either sell out to them to make something yes. back from your thing, mm -hmm. or you just... Yeah, it, it is very close to an enclosure of the commons, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in my mind, this, uh, you know, if, um, open source community aspects. Uh, for a close, uh, close code mm -hmm. yes, uh, completely. Uh, but I think we went into an into, into a interesting, very interesting tangent, but we were doing the check-ins. Yes. Um, yes. Um, so do, yeah. Bentley, did you want to check in? So hard to find the right tab. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. Uh, it was like, damn it, everything's a tab yeah. now. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, the main thing that's on top of my mind right now is uh, the list of tools for thought. Tools. So we may not be discussing that today, and that's fine. Um, so the Canonical Debate Lab, and Mark and Antoine may have mentioned it, that we're breaking off into committees, and so one committee is for our debate tools, which are very similar to tools. For, we figured we'd include our tools for thought as one of the categories in our systems. Um, so, you know, we just want to coordinate with everyone on how we're storing and modifying that data and stuff. So, I'd like to discuss that at some point. That sounds very interesting. Yeah. And I'm sorry that uh, Matthew isn't on this call or can't make this one, but he's hot and heavy on the same sort of thing. So yeah, uh, yeah. happy to open the, the can of worms and talk about it now. Uh, in particular, if there's questions that are like near the surface for you that you want to float with us. No, I, I think it's an open discussion, so it's probably best to, to wait till Matthew's back just so we don't. 
Since he's, it's his passion, <laughs> and we want to be aligned, so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Other than that, I'm just listening in, and I'll pop in if I can bring any value. Sweet. Um, I'll do a short check-in. Um, and uh, I just came back from two weeks in Europe. Uh, one week was at this really, really lovely conference called Unfinished, uh, which is unfinished.ro. Uh, there's an American knockoff called Unfinished Live, uh, done by Frank McCourt and his like wealthy people, which I'm angry at. Uh, so, and that happened a week before this unfinished in Romania in, in New York, but the unfinished in Romania is 10 years old. Um, I tried to be sort of mediator between the two, but they didn't treat the Romanians very nicely. Anyway, the Romanian thing is more of an art and technology and serious issues kind of all mixed together. Um, first three people I met were Brazil young Brazilians. One of them is, his name is Makul. Uh, it turns out singer, songwriter, guitarist, and winds up being our wandering minstrel around the campus where this conference is held, uh, narrating and singing fluidly as if he had just invented the whole narrative, like just so talented. Then I meet a young, uh, two young Brazilians who are rappers, uh, singer songwriters, Instagram and uh, uh, Tom, uh, TikTok stars whose photography skills are already off the charts when he starts like flicking through his thing, <clears throat> but he has a really bad stutter. And so when he raps, it's completely fluid and fabulous. And they're both like really good singer dancers um, in lots of different genres. But then he, you stop and talk and he has like a, a, a big uh, impediment speaking and they were just lovely. Um, so made friends with them. And then like my cool immediately, like, and what do you do? Well, like I do this brain thing. I do this. He's like, and then he starts asking perfect questions about the brain. So I open up my brain, we get the talk and it was really, really interesting. So the week was like that. Um, on, a, on a broad campus, I gave a keynote that I'm looking forward to seeing online, um, which was how I got the, the backstory of how I got the thesis for the speech I recorded and presented two years earlier when, this, when, when Unfinished was virtual. And that speech is called um, Trust is the Only Way Forward. <clears throat> so I basically did that. Then the next week I went to Lithuania because I had put out to my, to my network, hey, I'm, I'm going to be in Europe. What else should I do? And this little conference about management development being held in the second largest city in Lithuania, Kaunas, said, come here. And so they put me at the top of the program. I was the, I was the first keynote. Uh, and and I had a, they did not record the speeches, so that one's not going to show up online unless I reproduce it. But I liked that a lot because I got to talk about how we're in a titanic battle over the narratives in our heads and how all the stuff that we care about here kind of plays into that. Uh, says, and I just got off the off a Zoom uh, with a fellow who has a a, a, a game. Um, John and, and Bentley. He mentioned that he knows you, John Den, Jonathan Den, yeah. who mm -hmm. has a a, a gameish thing called Policy Keys. Um, and we had a good conversation. I, I it was very interesting. We were, we were resonating on a bunch of different interesting things. I don't know if you want to talk about uh, any of your interactions with him, but um, uh, it's been pretty small. So yeah. I don't think I have much to add yet, but you know, kind, kind of, of in the space. space. So partly what Policy Keys um, seems to have is he's trying to gamify uh, civic discussions around policy issues. So there'll be a policy question on the table. Uh, like there should be a there should be should there be an employer's living wage tax credit is one that he showed me, and then he'll deconstruct that into a series of pro and con arguments, and then take different people's points of view. And when you play the game, you take different parties' points of view on the issue, <clears throat> and then somehow through magic, I didn't we didn't have time to go through, um, you figure out which of the different issues that are numbered on the sides are the bottleneck issues or the hot issues for each of the constituencies, and that gets interesting. And there's a bunch of other stuff there, but I, I, I was coming back to the idea that if he opened that up as a playground, as a sandbox architecture of some sort, then he could connect to Society Library, to System.com, to Kumu, to a bunch of other tools to enhance all of the goodies that are, that are kind of in the mix for what he's trying to do. Because he's trying to get people to slow down and say, we seem to agree on these four things and disagree on these two things. Maybe we're closer to each other than we think and we can agree on something. 
So pretty, pretty, uh, pretty interesting there. Uh, what he's got is not elegant. Like the software's not beautiful, and he's not a coder. Um, but um, but I like I like what he's building. It's it's directionally really really interesting. So that by way of me checking in. Nice. And uh, Adam, would you like to share? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just, oh, is this, uh, sorry, I was just collecting the links from this conversation. Cool. I guess this website, this is this policy key thing just isn't set up yet. It's interesting. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, so mostly uh, real life work since the last time. Um, for those of you that don't know, I work in the privacy space and between various GDPR court cases, uh, Virginia privacy regulation, and changes to California privacy regulation. I've been putting in a lot of time reading law documents, um, lawyers' documents. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, I did share a link. I spotted this uh, project, sane.fyi, that looked like it was very much in our wheelhouse. Um, I don't know what our policy is for inviting people or how we handle it or what the tools are, but uh, I thought it, this um, this person, Ida, might be interesting to invite. She would be great. Um, and she's showing yeah. up in conversations for at Betaworks where they're doing the Tools for Thinking uh, camp. She's uh, a person we're probably going to approach for a podcast episode through them. So I don't know how that showed up, but um, it'd be great to invite her here if you want. Yeah, uh, I don't have any of her contact information. So okay. if she's showed up in your conversations, you should probably be the one to invite her. Cool. Um, but yeah, I found the same.fyi thing pretty interesting. Um, I did check out the, I guess this Kodo Slabs thing and tried to dig into that a little. It seems very linked to blockchain, um, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, yeah. It's a flag of some color. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not necessarily like uh, the end of the world or you know mm -hmm. the project, but it certainly does raise a flag of some color. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beyond that, just been trying to uh, fix some technical issues in my archiving tool for tweets. Uh, my big. Uh, my big problem um, that I'm trying to solve with this is I do a lot of my writing on Twitter and a lot of conversations through tweets because I, one of the reasons is because I like retweeting and adding comments, quote tweets. Uh, but then, of course, people delete their quote tweets, not out of like an intent to delete a particular tweet, tweet but because um, an increasing number of people have a policy to just delete their old tweets wow. wholesale. That's weird. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it has to do with the fact that um, it's now sort of standard operating procedure for any journalist or media personality or writer with a sufficient audience or YouTuber with a sufficient audience. If they rise into the crosshairs of the alt-right media machine, like thing number one they do is the alt-right media machine starts going through their old tweets. And they pick something uh, to pick an issue with. Yeah. Right, and take it out of context yeah. and turn it into a big deal and try and get the person fired, etc. Wow. Um, so I would like to capture those tweets locally where they are not going to be a concern. I would retweet something that would cause a problem for a person, which means archiving them. But the problem is that uh, it's very difficult to get on-page tweets to look like tweets on the site. And the embed tools that Twitter provides has two problems. The first is their API contract is that tweets that are embedded, even though the embed includes a block quote of the tweet, if the, if the tweet is embedded, it calls back to the API. And if that tweet is deleted, it will hide the block quote. Um, and the other problem is that uh, just the style and stuff looks pretty meh. Um, so, and it's very difficult to do. 
Um, but then on top of that, there's like features that I want to put in where like now you can see edited tweets and get a list back to those. Um, but it's, it's quite difficult to capture it all and get the archive version to look precisely like it should look. Um, and it seems like everyone who has tried to do this has just rolled their own version. And like, that is too messy to share. And I'm like, honestly, just give me some CSS rules. Um, that's, that's all I really want. Um, but yeah, so I've been digging in on that and trying to get that working better. I mean, there's... Twitter is so like weirdly ephemeral in a lot of places, and their terms of service is really aggressively against archivists yeah. uh, in some really nasty ways. Uh, I, but I figure as long as I sort of pack it together, they're not they're not going to come after me. Uh, and if they do, there's yeah. a useful tooling around it. Fun fact. Uh, WordPress secretly archives all tweets also automatically <laughs> for a couple of years back. Um, and they just never got, it was never noticed, um, but I'm not even WordPress. Uh, yeah, one inter interesting, yeah, that happened. One interesting uh, uh, possibility will be to like band together, you know, archivists uh, who want to uh, reasonably archive tweets they have seen, right? I, I think from the point, from just from the argument that you know, a user has seen a tweet, read it, interacted with it, could ha could possibly copy and paste it. Uh, then you could have the argument, you know, that archiving it uh, when there's an intention to archive is fine. Uh -huh. And there's a little tool that do this. Um, there's a little tools that work around API limitations uh, to some extent. And I think uh, so. My and you know, like I, you know, I, I run Moa Party, which is a cross poster service. That, for example, when you read when you retweet, it does uh, uh, essentially reproduce the content of the tweet that you retweeted or co-tweeted uh, in the failures. So then, of course, you have a copy there, but we are deciding. But that, that's already working, and we are sort of doing this. We know that we are borderline, maybe, but in a right way, in the right way, it seems. Yeah, um, I mean that's yeah. the problem, right? Like without the styling, it's. It's much diff more difficult to read, especially when you're dealing with retweets. And the Twitter right. API, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but it it's makes it very difficult, difficult right? Where it makes like, everything you can, difficult. Yeah, you can retrieve a tweet, but then you have to make a separate query to get some of, sometimes to quote tweet, sometimes not. Yes. Wow. If there's an image, you have to make a separate everything. query for the image. And if there's a video, you have to make a separate query for the video and a separate query for the audio. Um, it's really it's, overly complicated, and most of the API packages out there are not um, really that effective. And the other problem is, like, it's impossible to use the embeds at scale, right? If I want to have a collection of tweets, like a tweet thread, um, the way that the API is set up is that, by default, it adds the, the script call every time. Um, and you could get around that, but it's not easy. And then on top of that, if you have separate tweets that you want to store together on a page, each of those embeds query back all of this stuff from Twitter. And it makes the page incredibly slow. Um, so, like, it's just not possible to use their embeds if you're using maybe two or more yeah, uh, no. tweets on a page. Well, yeah, I don't know if you've seen the hour. Some, some hour pages has like, have like a hundred tweets, and you, you pull, uh, pull to embed all. You can take you, you get a buff. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, so neither you don't neither, no. No, don't learn neither. No. Oh, so neither is essentially um, a alternate. Um, it's basically uh, duck, duck, It's duck, duck, go for Twitter. No, it's actually a, an alternate uh, a front end for Twitter, built on top of like my with API and mostly the official API, which is it means, just means they do the stuff that they need to do to make it fast uh -huh. instead of like jumping through all these made up tools. Yeah. And by the way, I just spent like two weeks essentially uh, earlier, uh, actually the first two weeks of this month, pretty much, dealing with Twitter API issues. For, for the other one, because they just keep uh, making it more complicated, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and Meter um, actually uh, is open source, and uh, my, I, I, perhaps I don't know, uh, you, it's actually written in, I think in Elixir or something, something weird, but it's all open source, and it could be uh, worth checking whether 
the study they do and so on, perhaps it's very useful. Mm -hmm. Because it's pretty effective, and a lot of people, it's very fast. Well, hmm. Okay, I'll check that out. I didn't realize that, it, I just assumed that this was not open source, because it looked like the sort of piece of complexity, level of complexity that it would, <laughs> that it's the sort of thing somebody would try and sell. But okay, okay. this is useful. Yeah, yeah, no, and this is, it is pretty solid and very open and they have, they are pushing that as well, but in a way that makes sense. I, if I remember too, they, they um, dovetail with Instagram and I've used them as a means in the past of pulling photo URLs to be able to download originals of photos yes. at, you know, full scale and size, which Instagram hates you to do. Hmm. Um, I, I'm curious though, since you've looked at it, Arm, and it's been a couple months since I've checked into, you know, Twitter archive abilities, but if you had to recommend a poor man's version of it to someone with no coding skill, do you have a favorite? I no, mean, I mean, if I did, I'd be using it. <laughs> there, I mean, there are a few things like Threadreader app that you can pull up, put a thread into and they'll create a page with the full thread on it, and then you can archive that to like the Wayback Machine or something. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, um, Twitter's really interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, I don't personally like it, but I don't mind when people use it. I do a lot of Twitter threads and people use it on my threads all the time, and that's fine, I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but there are people who feel um, that Threader is stealing their work off of Twitter and, um, well, I don't agree with that position, I can understand where they're coming from. Um, but the more the more difficult problem for me, and this is especially my big problem with a lot of these Twitter archiving tools, is that they divorce it from the context, right? So you don't really understand these tweets as individual tweets, which I think is important for reading Twitter threads, mm -hmm. and you don't have the opportunity to interact with individual tweets, right? I, what I want from a Twitter tool is not just that it archives it, but that there's a retweet button on there or a like button on there or a reply button on there that brings you back to Twitter. And that's what's usually lacking in everything but the embed. And Twitter has like, they have what they call intent links, which makes it very easy to manage that once you have all of the Twitter information, but collecting it all and assembling it all into something that looks good and is readable is yeah, there's just not a lot that's done. Um, even the yeah. AK wrappers are not great either, and it's just a real mess. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I wonder if we could. I mean, I will be happy to uh, to discuss them because uh, the other award is doing archiving, and we all we are dealing with the same thing. It's like with the basic what it's doing. I wonder if we could share code or share approaches. Or at least map the space and try to find. I also know two people from Social Co that you could, you may be interested in collaborating with uh, in this open source. Ed Su, who is a digital archivist for Stanford, I think. And he's been doing, he actually did a PhD on archiving social media. I, I, I just found out everything this week. Super interesting. And uh, also uh, another person in Social Co, uh, Johnny, who is uh, now doing research. As well. Could you uh, you could do it over um, Mattermost? Could you send me their info? Because yeah. Um, yeah, I'll it, send me send me however you prefer to be pulled in, and I'll CC your. I don't think I, I don't think I have your email, but if you can send me their email and your email, I'll CC all of us. Because I agree, it would be nice to coordinate on this. And this has always been like um, a problem I've seen in archivist in the archivist realm, right? Um, when I used to work for a of new media, we had this problem too, where we wanted to archive tweets. And we ended up, for the most part, I think, basically just building a way to automatically screenshot them, which is All right. undesirable. Well, screenshotting, yeah. yeah, but it has a lot of potential, screenshotting, yeah. particularly in closed platforms like Android and iOS. Sorry, did I should say close? I meant, okay. So, uh, so uh, sorry. Um, I wanted to say uh, on the question of uh, what is the easiest way, you know, you, you know, to archive. The easiest way I know, but for what it's worth, is uh, sign up for a cross poster, get an account to the failures, and, and essentially retweet um, or quote quote tweet uh, everything you want to say. 
it is basic, but it is very, it is, it is essentially amounts to two clicks. How does the internal uh, archive which solve figures, the problem? Wait, sorry, which thing are you signing up for, did you say? Uh, just a cross poster for the failures. Sign up for, sign up for the failures. For which? Uh, right. Sorry, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know the favorite? A Mastodon uh, is a favorite, is like, it, okay, so open source. Um, uh, uh, oh, okay. Basic, yeah, essentially uh, activity pub, you know? Uh, but, oh, so you're like putting Twitter, yeah, but that also breaks all the links. Like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways to do basic archiving where you yes. capture the data in the tweet, but not, uh, but it doesn't get the full data, and it does, usually the media is stripped out if there's media there. Right, I agree, but I, I guess, sorry, like, uh, what I meant to say is, the cross poster gives you the basics, but uh, I, I, I run with us a cross poster, more partly, and it is our intent, this is uh, now do, is like to add features to first dump all posts in uh, any format you want to disk, like, you know, in our compatible, like a repository of, of, of uh, files. And, and second, you know, add, add this feature, essentially get the extra data from Twitter and dump it as well, or uh, idea, ideally provide an underneath front end. We could set up meter for this, uh, this backups. So, you know, like, uh, and it has like uh, 1.5 thousand users. It's not huge, but that is a community. community. Uh, are you Flanzin Moa party yes. or is that part of a bigger collective? Yes, this is part of the Festoa, the Federation Stoa, which is a group sort of associated with Agora, but not really Agora. Because what is, you know what is man? Uh, no. uh, B man? No? Oh, okay. From, so, yeah, so he's in Fission. You know Fission, lads? I think? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, we run it uh, essentially. Uh, uh, we run it. Okay, I yeah, I think I knew he was part of it too at some point. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, I mean, it's a, a, we have a little, it works. Uh, it's basically it works. Two clicks done. Uh, the biggest uh, obstacle to using it remains choosing a, an instance in the favors, like it happens uh, very often. But I am also the admin. Just another and with this, I need my plugs. Which are one intention <laughs> for uh, social call, which I think is a very interesting instance and bias. Uh, well, I, I joined it, I didn't start it, but I joined it and I just became an admin because uh, you know, it was needed for help. Um, uh, or any other uh, instance. Uh, but anyway, uh, I will be super happy to work in the space because I think archival, and in particular, an archival too, which is ethical, pro social. You know, completely or, uh, or you know, nothing under the table. And that also can make the argument we are saving the user's data because it's the user's data. And the user has, has told us that you want this. So if you don't like it, you can completely phrase. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of one of the interesting things I was trying to dig into as well, which is. You can export your entire database of Twitter from Twitter, right? You can ask for a data right. checkout. It gives you a lot of data. I mean, it takes I saw, one day. Yeah, it takes a day usually. And I saw some tools that are like readers for that database, which is yes. interesting, though not really what I want either. Um, and so that was like the other thing that I wanted to do. Once I got this sort of tweet capturing process done, um, I could, oh, I'll take a look at that. I could um, essentially just dump it into like, so strip out DMs, which I assume are in there, and dump it into a GitHub repo, and then just have like a local copy of my own Twitter built by a static site generator. Exactly. Um, yeah. So and then what, like, what, on top of that, I could crawl the links in those tweets and archive them, and it opens up a whole bunch of other useful pieces. Uh, that I would like to do. Completely. I mean, so more part it, the intention is to do this real time. So you don't have to deal with the bullshit, sorry, of like going and uh, waiting for a day, I don't know, for someone to push out on Twitter. Uh, and the other thing is like, we also want to do other things like, if you use more, if you use more party or a similar thing, and I do the same, and we both have, and we befriend each other in Twitter, well, they too could be, uh, make us friends also in the favors. Which then yeah. it works as a correlation tool for moving from Twitter to Twitter 2, from Instagram to Instagram 2, or whatever else we want to do. 
Uh, so essentially, you know, the tool can use this knowledge of the social graph to uh, help the users, uh, yeah, very likely, to help the users uh, actually make moves they want to do. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a very slow uh, website, actually. I don't think that is the right one. No, see right now. Sort of sidebar. So it should be uh, in the hour, right, which is where I say my. Yeah, let me see. Yes. But the hours is low now as well. Mm, that's my internet. Because all of us are using it all at once. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Because we're all using it all at once. <laughs> You think, uh, hopefully, but no, actually, it's like uh, I, I, I need to uh, to move to a, a, a different server. Yes, yeah, so I have a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> right. right. Well, I was just popping up the search, but you beat me to it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, for some reason, I have it. it see, it's a lot of pool. Uh, so that, uh, yes, it does go to the helper. And the account is this one. I know they. Uh, I know they. Oh wait, they changed the account. Hmm, actually, I haven't used it in a while. Anyway, uh, he uh, was also doing interesting stuff. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I actually uh, have a hard stop at the top of the hour. Uh, okay. Is it top of the hour or it is. Uh, it's the top of the hour. So what we're saying. <laughs> Um, and we should uh, so talk, I, I, we should negotiate or talk about a better time for these calls. Yes, that would be awesome. Um, uh, so Wednesday, you're saying would be good. Anybody else? Is Wednesday a hard stop or an okay thing for anybody else? Oh, well, it depends on the time. But that's like to be clear, Friday is not terrible. It's just this exact hour. <laughs> that's terrible. Right. Um, for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Wednesday uh, after 2 p.m. Eastern, I'm usually pretty clear. And I mean, I know we, I know we got like we're going late for some people. Well, we were trying to move uh, around for um, hypothesis, Whaley, um, but he's only made one call, and I'm like, let's 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 sort of move back to some place where we're really comfortable. Uh, yeah, for, for me, Friday, sometimes um, it, it tends to uh, conflict more with like social things because it's a Friday evening here. And right. sometimes I'm like, you know, um, like I really want to make it, but then it's like, you know, yes. <laughs> International symbol for cocktail hour. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, sounds great. Friends, so. So, so Thursdays and Wednesdays, I can find room. I just want to sort of land at some place where it's uh, convenient for our, most of us. Um, so I, I, I could do Wednesdays at 10 a.m., Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, and here my times are Pacific. Yeah, um, Wednesday at 10 a.m. sounds... I like Wednesday because it, uh, it will be like it, it can't come day. And we, don't have, meeting, and, and we don't have Matthew on the call, and he was the one who was trying to coordinate us, so we need to pick something. Let's, let's, let's go back and forth on the uh, Mattermost channel for the fellowship. Yeah. And uh, maybe propose Wednesday at ten. See if see how that floats for everybody, and then go from there. Yeah, it's very possible. I have I have a lock in on Wednesday at that time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, so Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday's, yeah. Wednesday's when would work for you, Arm? Oh, so you said from I mean, basically from eleven o'clock Pacific. So from two p.m. on on Wednesday would work for you. Uh. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. The, the what. That's what, um, yeah, from 11 a.m. Pacific onward. So how's 11 a.m. Pacific for other people on Wednesdays? Good for Chris. Bentley? Um, what, what yeah, that should be fun. Why don't we start by proposing 11 on Wednesdays and then see where that goes? Go, go, go. On the, on the thread. And shall we stop this call at the top of the hour? The rest of us want to stay and keep going for a bit on this. Oh, I have to jump too. So okay, let's melt the call. Uh, let's melt the call now, um, and that's good because stupid Jitsi doesn't let me record more than an hour at a time, and then I don't have two parts to upload, and that simplifies life so much. I wonder if he, he has the invitation now. You know, do you see? Do you want to just stay on the call for a long time to see if it breaks? 
I think we just pass on our finish. Yeah, it's, it's counting the order of time, right? It's yes. counting the mm -hmm. time of the of the. Yes, but I didn't turn the recording on right at the start. But good question. No, it's usually three minutes. Yeah, I got to say three minutes for sure. We'll be excited. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, how does how does the Internet Archive solve the Twitter archival problem? Because they oh, give, yeah, sorry, they, give a, meant, they give a big yeah. damn about this, right? Yeah, I meant to ask that earlier, but we got distracted. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting, right? Because they have a very different in, they have a very different um, set of goals around their archiving, right? Which is they don't really care about preserving the social engagement or anything like that. They just want a record of it. Right. So where they do preserve tweets. Um, and they've gone back and forth on this, and I think some users are preserved and some users are not. Um, they do so using the same way they preserve Like, they just take each tweet as an individual web page, and they preserve it as work files the same way that they preserve the rest of the web. Hmm, okay. um, which is fine for what they're trying to do, right? Yeah. But it sort of does rob it of anything else. I mean, that, in fact, most people don't even use... I, like, Twitter is so inconsistent about which accounts, uh, sorry, not Twitter. The archives in, is not very consistent about which accounts it archives and when. Mm. Um, so very often when people want to archive tweets for themselves, they use like archive.is or whatever URL it's sitting at these days or something like that. Or you can use something like Rhizome's archival tool or that type of thing. Um, but in all those cases, what's generating is a WARC, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically like a baked version of the web experience. Mm -hmm. And so it's not super useful for sharing outside of like viewing as an archive. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas what I want out of my tweets is a more, uh, more durable, context, more contextualized. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Very interesting. Um, and and the archive has open lunch on every Friday, and since pandemic, you can join through Zoom. So feel oh. like like Fridays you can just show up for um, lunch with the archive. They usually have a guest speaker. They usually even have a musician. Five minutes if you join mm -hmm. at five minutes before the before noon Pacific on Fridays, you will get a ten minute musical performance by somebody they've invited in to, to entertain. Um, and, and I did I did a guest talk about my brain, my use of the brain at the archive. So okay, cool. that's really cool. I didn't realize that that had gone remote. Uh, the to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of San Francisco, but the Web Archive is one of the few locations that I really, really enjoy every time I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's a fascinating project. Yeah. And uh, Jason Scott, right? Uh, he's very active. And yes, he's in our, like, a really interesting person. Yeah. I was sad I got, um, actually, I tweeted about this, but like way back during. Um, uh, during Gamergate, one of the people who was dealing with abuse was one of the people who would eventually go to set up um, Block Party, which is the shared block list application. Um, and at the time, I was just off being a games journalist, so I was very vocal talking about it and, and trying to support folks who were getting abuse thrown at them by the whole Gamergator mess. Um, but the person who was managing the block list just went and added a whole bunch of people to it who they didn't really know. Hmm. But they were like, this person's being involved, and I don't know who they are, therefore they must be bad. Oh. Um, and so that block list ended up in Block Party app. And when um, uh, the person we were just talking about, Jason, right, text files on Twitter. Mm -hmm. this, this shows how much time I spend on Twitter. I can remember people's handles better. Yeah. And yeah. Names. Um, but he recently got under a bunch of abuse because somebody spread some misinformation about the web archive, uh, and so he put on a block list and I got blocked, um, which is frustrating. Yeah, because I really enjoy Twitter feed. I don't even interact with it. This is the problem with that, and it is you know, there's a whole other conversation to talk about automated blocking tools and why we definitely need them, but on the other hand, they can be frustrating. Very much so, yes. And uh, this is reminding me of the problem of uh, a lot of the favors has just managing.